Hi everybody, I'd like to do a book review please. It's the 30th of, um, of April 2017 and my book review today is this book which um, this comes in two volumes. It's been one of the most precious books that I've ever had. And you say, what is it, Stephen? Well, this is the collected writings of Harold St. John in two volumes, produced in March uh, 1989 and published by Gospel Tract Publications. Um, and uh, what an absolute treasure this book is. You'll see that it's ex it's mainly expository teaching. Let me just show you what the page looks like. You'll see Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Ruth, Job, Psalms. This is the collected writings. Now, dear brother Harold St. John wrote a great deal. Um, he didn't write so much books, but he was a writer of his own study notes his own Bible study material um, he couldn't understand people who didn't have uh, notebooks of all the things that they've read and all the things that they've learnt that was something he found very hard to understand he always kept a note his, 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 his method was that each week he would have a small um, scrapbook it would be a sort of like a small um, memo book like an old-fashioned English um, book that you'd have at school. And during the course of a week, he would write scribble notes. He would be on a bus or in the office or wherever he would be, he would scribble notes. And then on a Saturday, he would then sit down and he would transcribe all of these notes by hand in very detailed, perfect um, handwriting into what he called his fair copy book so his fair copy book was actually the place where all of these notes went um, when I first came across these two volumes I was shocked I'll tell you how much of a change it came to me I sat down to read a little bit of it and I went to his first chapter where he talks about um, the first chapter he deals with, he talks about the third version, which is the the, the Derby version. Version. He then begins on breaking hedges, and then the first one that really blew my socks off was the Men of Genesis. And in these passages, in these pages, sometimes I would spend an hour just on one page reading everything you can see my notes very extensive underlining everything he seemed to everything he seemed to touch he seemed to make it so simple so amazing he talks about the bow in the cloud he talks about crimson and amber and gold and green and blue and violet and ultraviolet and almost black he talks about he unpicks the scriptures in the most amazing way he said studying the bible was like picking apples you'd go to a book and you'd go through it and you'd just find the apples would just fall into your hand he said and then what you would then do is you'd go back to every br every branch excuse me go back to every branch and you'd look under every leaf and you'd examine that tree until you've exhausted as you would think and then you go to the next tree and that's what he did you can see that my notes are very extensive in the book see there look um, and here what Harold St. John does is he suggests further study constantly constantly he seems to have an overall view of scripture now theologically I don't actually sit exactly where Harold St. John sits however I would willingly sit at his feet any day
He was a man of exceptional, exceptional godliness. He was at one time a revivalist. He was a, a, a Bible teacher and a scholar of scripture to an extraordinary degree. He was a man of tremendous godliness. And, you know, being a student of scripture and being a godly man doesn't necessarily go together. Often people can be one or the other. But in him, it seemed to just fit perfectly together. He was a missionary. He was self-taught in all. He never had the opportunity because of family circumstances to go to university. So he would make use of all that he could get hold of. And he would go to the library, perhaps once a day, and come home with a big armful of books and he would go through them. And he would help himself to all the knowledge and the science of this world. But his chief study was in the scriptures. And so this is the sort of book that I would take with me on a holiday. If I have a holiday and I don't have many holidays, I'd take this with me. And I'd take a pen and I'd just read it page by page by page by page. And he would just completely open my eyes to understand the scriptures. Now that doesn't mean to say that I automatically are on the same page with him theologically. There are little things about what he believed I think are not quite as I see scripture. But we mustn't let those things ever put us off. This is a man, and by the way, in the front of this book I've got a really nice picture of him. Have a look at that. Do you notice... Do you notice his calm demeanour? Do you notice that he's a man that's tall? Do you notice that he's got some really good heavy boots? <laughs> he was a walker, you see. He never drove. And so he would use public transport and he would walk. He would walk 25 miles a day to take meetings and, and walk, walk back. He was a man who was of the Victorian era. A man of extraordinary character. It was said of him that he knew his Bible more than anyone in the whole of England. And probably true. On one occasion he was reading from a very obscure passage. And the lights went out. And without any hesitation and without missing a heartbeat he continued to quote the whole passage all the way through. The young people said to him. How many times have you read this passage in preparation for today? And he confessed, well, I've read it 50 times. 50 times he read the passage in order to prepare his mind and heart for the, for the, for the teaching of the scriptures. So, wow, I say, what an amazing experience. This is the sort of book that should be on the shelf of every Christian. It's a treasury it is the thinking and it is the study of a whole lifetime put into just two small volumes. I absolutely highly recommend it to you all. So it's called it's called The Collected Writings of Harold St. John by uh, Gospel Tract uh, Publications. God bless you all. It's great to talk to you. I look forward to speaking to you next Sunday. Bye for now.